described in Scripture as a model church. And Paul was able to uh, use the Thessalonians as a, an example of many of the qualities that they sought to see in the lives of individuals. So this book is really a letter. And after Paul left, he wrote this letter back to the church that he had come to love uh, so deeply. Here's what I'm going to suggest this morning, that as you read through this little letter, you're going to very quickly sense the rhythmic beating of what I'm going to call a pastor's heart. And when we talk about the pastor's heart, I want you to think about the heart for ministry that Pastor Holly has and the heart for ministry that Pastor Lloyd Eyre has and the hearts that they've demonstrated to you, their people. I think that this look into the Apostle Paul's heart reveals some of the key characteristics that God is looking for in a pastor's heart. Uh, in a sense, what Paul describes is a model for pastoral ministry that's really worth emulating. And I want to demonstrate to you uh, how your pastors have fulfilled this model. Now, I, I need to just make a bit of an apology here. I already uh, apologized to Holly. Uh, probably somebody told me, and I probably missed it, uh, but I, I didn't kind of bring the Holly component into the equation this morning. And so the message uh, really focuses more on Pastor Lloyd. But you know what? You love Holly as well, and I know that the things that I say directed to Pastor Lloyd, you're going to be able to apply to Holly, aren't you? Yes, thank you. I needed, I needed that, I needed that af affirmation. Well, <clears throat> if you've been looking up at the screen here, uh, you can see that I'm going to kind of use a medical analogy for the title of my message. Uh, you know that if... Uh, a medical doctor wants to find out what's going on in a physical heart, what do they do? They give you one of these, right? And by the way, uh, in, in, in sequence here, this is not Pastor Lloyd 30 years ago. <coughs> I have no idea who it is, uh, but anyway, it, it, was a, it was a kind of a neat picture. Uh, but they give you, sometimes they're called EKGs, sometimes they're called ECGs, electrocardiogram is what they're called and it gives you a readout that tells you what's going on in your heart uh, I almost said how many of you've had one but no I won't I won't go there I, I've had one uh, more than one so here's what I want to do I want to take that idea but using this scripture passage from first Thessalonians. boy that's a tough word to say I should have an abbreviation for it, like I don't know what. But anyway, from this book, uh, if, if we're going to use what Paul describes as kind of a, an EKG of a pastor's heart, and when we're talking about it, I want you to think of Pastor Hawley's heart for ministry and Pastor Lloyd's heart for ministry. We okay with that? All right, great. As I studied this passage... Um, partly in preparation for today, but on other occasions as well, uh, I was really impacted uh, by the Apostle's heart for ministry that is revealed in this passage. And as I said, uh, I, I, I couldn't help but make the connection between the hearts that are demonstrated in your pastors, and that's what I want to talk about uh, with you this morning. I'm going to identify some of the characteristics or the qualities of the pastor's heart that we see in the Apostle Paul and show uh, how we see these in your pastors as well. Here's the first thing that I want to mention. A pastor's heart is a gift from God. Let me say it again. A pastor's heart is a gift from God. You remember in Pastor Lloyd's comments there uh, just before he kind of introduced me, 
he talked about that first year at Pine Grove as being the year that he sorted out the issue of his call to ministry. You see, when God calls a person to ministry, as he has for Pastor Holly and Pastor Lloyd, he gives them a pastor's heart. That's what's involved in being called to ministry. I want you to notice, notice verse 4. We're in chapter 2 here, verse 4. Uh, Paul says this, We speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. You see those two ideas, approved by God and entrusted. He specifically says with the gospel. But I think we can broaden that to say entrusted for pastoral ministry. So I just want to kind of uh, introduce that at the very beginning here uh, because it's, it's uh, important that we realize that a pastor's heart is a gift from God. It's a pastor's sense of calling uh, that enables a, a pastor to hang in there through all of the things that happen in the life of a pastoral family. The fact that Pastor Lloyd has been here for 30 years and Pastor Holly has been here for 15 years at the Peterborough Free Methodist Church, I think, is significant evidence that they have a pastoral calling. They have been given a pastor's heart from God. Here's the second quality that I see in this passage. A pastor's heart loves. A pastor's heart loves loves. Would you look at verse 8? This is Paul, and he's just speaking from his heart here uh, to the people that he's come to love. He says, we loved you so much because you had become so dear to us. Can you hear the affection in that? He cares deeply about uh, these people. And I believe that just like the Apostle Paul, Pastor Lloyd and Pastor Holly love you. And they feel of you as their church family and their beloved people. They don't just say that they love, but they demonstrate their love for you in practical ways. It's interesting, as we read on here in this passage, actually step back one verse, uh, Paul gives us two word pictures uh, for uh, the relationship between a pastor and his people. And they explain the dimensions of love for the congregation that the apostle had for those at Thessalonica. The first picture is in verse 7. Paul says, We were gentle among you like a mother caring for her little children. Gentle among you like a mother caring for her little children. The, the, the literal language is... It is a nursing mother. We were like a nursing mother. That's sort of the highest picture of care and caregiving and love and concern for a little one. In preparation uh, for this message, I uh, made contact with Pastor Holly, and uh, I asked her, again not realizing that she was being celebrated as well, asked her to help get me some testimonies from people in the congregation uh, about Pastor Lloyd that would confirm the things that I'm wanting to say uh, to you. And I think it's probably a tribute to Holly uh, that she did not say somewhere in her response. And by the way, Pastor Vic, I've been here 15 years, and we're recognizing that as well. But she's too gracious to do that. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to tell you who the comment is from. I hope I have the names right if I don't. And by the way, all the stuff that Holly and others sent me, this would be a three-hour sermon. Now, I know that's justifiable because it's one hour for every decade for Pastor Lloyd being here. But I know that by the end of the third hour, I would be speaking to myself. So I'm going to try and compress it. But here's what I'm going to do. If you don't hear... Uh, your little comment come out this morning. Be assured, I'm going to pass it all on to Pastor Lloyd uh, when, uh, when, uh, when I get back to the office tomorrow, okay? But, but here's, here's Holly's comment. 
Pastor Air cares very deeply for his people. He is burdened when his people are hurting or sick and celebrates when his people have reason to celebrate. I love that both sides of the coin kind of a thing. If someone needs a visit at the hospital or is in crisis and needs a, li a listening ear, he is there. Uh, Jim McKay, McKay? McKee, sorry, Jim McKee, uh, commented about uh, Pastor Ayer setting up a blind date with he and Betty. And, and we know how that went, don't we? For anybody who doesn't, it worked. They got married. Now, please understand that Pastor Lloyd has considerable experience in this area because a dear friend uh, of mine set he and Karen up on a blind date. And that worked out pretty well, too. All right, so, uh, but, you know, it's, it's an example of the kind of love and care that he has for his people. Uh, Carol Donaldson made this comment. I've had no other pastor since becoming a Christian, and I'm overwhelmed when I think of the number of times and the many ways Pastor Eyre has extended himself to our family. Uh, I think this is right this past Good Friday, Pastor and Karen drove from Uxbridge to a downtown Toronto hospital emergency room to support me and my family while I awaited surgery. Three years ago, Pastor Aaron Karen drove three hours one way to attend the funeral of Greg's mom. You see, those kinds of selfless acts demonstrate love. When you saw the pictures this morning and you, you heard Holly's voice break, you got a little glimpse into the heart of love and compassion that she has for her children as well. Now the second picture that Paul uses here, uh, first was that of a, the kind of love of a nursing mother. Uh, the second one is found in verses 11 and 12, and I, I hope you're tracking with me here. Paul says this, for you know that we dealt with each of you personal, hands-on ministry. We dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. I want to just identify those three key words here. The first one is encouraging. Uh, Rob made this comment. I think of Reverend Eyre meeting people at the back of the sanctuary. I'm assuming that's uh, at the end of, uh, of service. Asking personal questions like how my family is doing, how work is going. And knowing the interest we share in sports, he'll ask something about sports. I don't know if he asked about the Maple Leafs or not. Probably that would be on the border of being sacrilegious. But anyway... <clears throat> Rob continues, he says, other examples would be going on the New Brunswick missions trip, supporting the rent through roof project, and encouraging Adam and Ashley as mis missionaries. A spirit of encouragement. I could, I could sense with Holly as well uh, that uh, the, the kids responding, coming up now, not kids, but young adults, uh, sense her encouragement and her support of them. The second key word here is comforting. Uh, the idea of comforting is to come alongside, to feel the pain of the other person. Uh, Jim Hicks made this comment. When my employment ended suddenly after 35 years, Pastor Lloyd was the first person I reached out to. His advice and support was a critical factor in restoring my mental health and getting back on my feet over the next few months. See, that's what comforting does. Comes alongside and helps to lift the load. Uh, Pat made this comment. Lorraine and I have had to speak to Pastor about some difficult issues in the past. He was always sensitive and had such compassion and really understood and gave great advice. Many people mentioned Pastor Lloyd's care and compassion uh, on the occasions of funerals and during times of loss and sorrow. So encouraging 
and comforting, but there's a third one, and that's urging. And the context here is urging them to pursue godliness. I love what Wendy said. I had been away from the church for quite some time, and I knew it would take someone very special to get my heart beating once more for God. I found this in Pastor Eyre. His sermons are close to his heart, and he always has that personal touch in them. It's his honesty and love of God that brought me back, and I will forever be grateful. Aren't these beautiful testimonies to the qualities of the hearts of your pastors here at Peterborough Free Methodist Church? Here's the third quality of a pastor's heart. A pastor's heart shares. Shares. Paul reminds uh, the Thessalon Thess Thessalonians, I'm going to have to uh, really work on that. <clears throat> Truth is, I've been working on it for 50 years, and <laughs> you, you can see how that's working out for me, right? Anyway, I, I'll just quit saying it. <clears throat> how, about if, how about if I say TH? Will you, will you, you know that that's either... Thessalonians or Thessalonica, all right? You, you, you'll have to put, put, it, put it right. Okay. Anyway, Paul reminds them uh, that they had shared with them, first of all, the gospel of God. You know what I believe? I am confident that Pastor Lloyd and Pastor Hawley have shared Christ with many people, uh, even some who are here in our congregation this morning. And um, people could stand up and say, Pastor Lloyd, Pastor Holly, you shared the gospel with me, and I'm a Christian today because of God's grace and your faithfulness. That's an amazing thing. I happen to know that both of them have supported mission endeavors in many places, uh, and the purpose of those was to see people one to Christ. I love what the Apostle says in verse 13. Remember now, this is his, from his heart to the heart of the people that he's been a pastor to. And we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is the word of God, which is at work in you uh, who believe. The Thessalonians were impacted and transformed by the power of the Word of God as the apostles shared it. They had come to trust in Christ, and that's all about salvation. The gospel is so simple. Jesus came as the divine Son of God, lived a perfect life, died on a cross to pay our sin debt, was buried, proving that he was really dead. And then on the third day, he rose from the dead to give life, everlasting life, uh, to you and to me. So they trusted Christ for salvation. They were filled with the Holy Spirit for transformation, to be changed from what they were into Christ-likeness and what they could become. Remember, this happened by the power of God's Word. I believe that Pastor Lloyd and Pastor Hawley, their, uh, their combined passion is to see lives transform, people change from the inside out, and they both use God's Word to bring about that change. Uh, I, I like Doris's comment, Pastor Eyre has never given us a bad sermon. I wish my people could say that about me. <clears throat> but they mention the trouble I have pronouncing Thessalonica. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just having fun with you here. But we're talking about passion for ministry. It was this passion for ministry in the heart of Pastor Lloyd and the leaders at the time that prompted them to take the daring step to move out to this property and build this incredible facility to the glory of God. What a tribute uh, to his ministry uh, this really is. 
It was this passion to see people's lives changed and people converted and people transformed that caused Pastor Lloyd to be one of the originators of the church in the city ministry, which is unique to Peterborough. Many cities have tried to emulate it, but it's a unique uh, factor of the Christian community here in Peterborough. Pastor Lloyd's friend and colleague, Pastor Glenn Duncan, observes that because of Pastor Lloyd's desire to live for the glory of God, he is not concerned about building his own kingdom, but he is only concerned about building the kingdom of God. I want to take a closer look at verse 8 again. We, we looked at it a moment ago, but I want to pick up a different idea here. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Oh, I, I love that line. I think that uh, uh, from what we saw in the slides with Pastor Holly and what we know about Pastor Lloyd, this could be the life verse for your pastoral team here at Peterborough Free Methodist. Uh, they share their lives. They are transparent. They are authentic. They are honest in their ministry with you, their people. Uh, Jim Hicks made this comment. Pastor Lloyd's transparency in sharing the difficult events and stages in his personal life gave all of us permission to be open with our own trials and tribulations. That's a very significant statement. And then Jim mentioned... Uh, uh, his, his beloved brother Paul's struggle with cancer that eventually took his life. Some struggles within the family. And then concerns for his parents' declining health and ultimately uh, the funerals for both his dad and his mom. Let me share one more quality with you here. A pastor's heart is passionate pastor's heart is passionate. Uh, notice verses 9 and 10. Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We work night and day in order not to be a burden to you, uh, sorry, not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. Then in verse 10, he says, you are witnesses and so, in, and so is God of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. You see, the apostles' passion here found expression through diligence and the practice of godliness. Uh, the word toil that Paul uses here uh, literally means to work to the point of exhaustion. Uh, worked night and day kind of says it all, doesn't it? You don't need to interpret that. Here's another comment from Pastor Hawley about Pastor Lloyd. I doubt that anyone would question how hardworking and dedicated Pastor Eyre is. Working with him, I have seen firsthand the long hours that he puts in and the tasks that he does without complaint for the benefit of the church. Little things like adjusting the thermostat in the church for community groups, taking trips to the dump or recycling center, picking up garbage around the grounds, photocopying bulletins just to name a few tasks. It's a mark of humility when a pastor is willing to serve in some of the non-glamorous kinds of ways. I want to suggest to you that Pastor Holly and Pastor Lloyd don't just work hard, but they work well. I think it could be said of them, they autograph their work with excellence. Did you notice Paul's reference to how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you? Many of the people that sent responses to Holly's request about comments uh, regarding Pastor Eyre uh, made mention uh, of the fact uh, that Pastor Eyre uh, demonstrated uh, the grace of humility uh, in an abundant way. Doris said this, no matter the situation, Pastor presents himself in a matter which in a manner rather which complements the church. Myrna shared that the owner of the old bookstore affirmed Pastor Eyre for his humility. 
and he added this comment, or she added this comment, there are always people in and beyond our church commenting on how humble and understanding our pastor is. Again, I want to quote Jim Hicks, because he shared how impacted he was as he watched his pastor encounter unjust opposition from outside the church. And here's what Jim said. Pastor accepted this injustice with grace and without any sense of retaliation or the need to get even. And then Jim added this. It was one of the most powerful examples of the work of the Holy Spirit that I have witnessed. Well, let me end with this. Uh, I had the privilege of teaching at Bethany Bible College uh, for three and a half years, and my task there was to build into the lives of young potential pastors. And here's what I discovered. I discovered that you can teach people skills, you can give them knowledge, but you can't give them a heart. Only God can do that. And I want to suggest to you as I close this morning that God has given to your pastoral team, Pastor Lloyd and Pastor Holly, he has given them authentic, genuine pastor's hearts. I believe that we're all convinced that that's what God has done for your pastoral team. Today we celebrate the fact that that you as a congregation have been blessed with these gifts from God. 30 years, the gift of Pastor Lloyd. 15 years, the gift of Pastor Holly. And the fact that Pastor Lloyd has served you lovingly for 30 years and Pastor Holly for 15 suggests that, as the Apostle Paul said to the Thessalonians, or of the Thessalonians, so your pastors would say of you, you are my hope, my glory, and my joy. Those are mentioned in verses 19 and 20. Why do I believe that that's true? Well, it's because your pastors have pastors' hearts. Hearts given by God. Hearts that love. Hearts that share and hearts that are passionate about ministry. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your faithfulness to the Peterborough Free Methodist Church. God, we thank you for the gift of leadership that you have given to this congregation. For 30 years, Pastor Lloyd has been your appointed leader. And then, Lord, for the last 15 years, he has been joined by Pastor Hawley. And together they have demonstrated so beautifully and so convincingly that they have been given pastors' hearts by you. Father, I pray your blessing upon this congregation. I pray your blessing upon the pastoral staff and the lay leaders who work with them. And God, may you fulfill every dream, every purpose, and every future objective that you have for the Peterborough Free Methodist Church, we pray in Jesus' name and God's people said, Amen. Amen. We're going to have an opportunity to respond to Pastor Vic's message this morning as we sing Change.